Hi, I'm Ozzy Jurok, and uh, I will today put together a small video on the Ozbuzz issue 46. I announced it on Facebook, and I had over 50 messages saying, where is it, what is it? Essentially, the way it works is that you have to sign in. It's free, but you have to sign in, put in your email. That way you get the Ozbuzz when it's printed. If you just go to the website and want to look at it, it doesn't get there two weeks later. That's how I try to, in a very tricky way, try to get you to subscribe. Now, we have just under 22,000 subscribers, and I thank you. And I wish you all would go to our video site now and then click on this video, subscribe to it, and like it. Well, we're going to talk today, then, a summary of the issue that went out yesterday to all the subscribers. And it has to do with the current numbers, which are kind of, there are some surprises in the numbers. Don't believe everything you see in the press. But we're also going to talk some new things that CMHC is introducing, some of the things that the BC government is introducing briefly. Then we really take down a hard look at questions. My God, this month has been question months. I must, uh, I've never had so many questions because it was home. I answered them all, but can't keep on doing that because each question that I answer, I then get another one back. Okay. Anyways. Before I get going, I want to share this story with you, and this has to do with a fellow buys a brand new, beautiful BMW, and he's roaring along. He's like, i got to see what this thing will do, right? And he goes, he floors it. Sure enough, he's doing 150, 160, 180. At 180, big light in the back, police cars behind him, stops him. He says, what are you doing? You're going like a maniac. He says, no, look, he says, I'm almost finished with my shift. And if you have a story I haven't heard before from somebody like you that races like an idiot, if I never heard it before, I'll let you go. The guy thought for a while and he said, well, sir, he says, 10 years ago, my wife left me for a policeman. And when I saw your light in the back, I thought it was you. You wanted me to take her back. <laughs> well, innovative kind of a story. But it's this kind of want to get back to, are we going to get back to the way we were before the virus? Are we going to be brand new? Are we going to get a ticket and penalized for some of the things we didn't do that we should have done? And so when we take a look at the world around us, first of all, we live in the best country in the world, in Canada. We live in the best province in BC. The whole world is filled with people at immigration offices that want to be here. Not just Canada. The United States, too, has a lot of people wanting to move here. And yet the biggest danger that I see is that democracy is under pressure because we don't want just to vote. We want to vote for our kind of people, and everybody else is some sort of an idiot. And a lot of the questions that I got had to do with sort of an attitude that was perceived in me. Hey, I love this country. I like democracy. And if I'm in opposition, I'm in loyal opposition. Right? So let's take a look at the numbers, uh, and you have to sort of bear with me because I, for the numbers, I want to make sure I have them right. Yes, the papers were right. We're down 43% in sales. But when you look over the last four years, it's actually worse than that because we had 1,400 odd sales this year, 2,600 last year. But in 2017, we had 4,300. So we've come a long way in the last four years. But you know, the price at a million forty-eight thousand total average was a million and twelve last year. It's actually up four percent. The price for the average condo in Vancouver is up three percent, and the average price for a condo in the Fraser Valley is also up three percent. So you know it isn't that it just you know hey the real bottom fell out. The other thing is of course that listings also went down. That's the big thing for me. In Toronto we had listing increases between one hundred and two hundred percent in two years ago, at the same time when sales fell, and the market went down in price. We have lower sales, but we also have much lower listings, meaning the, the owner says, you don't come near me in my house, the coronavirus, and I don't want to sell right now. So we have a lot less product. And so that's why prices actually stayed up. I mean, when you look at the average price actually being higher in this kind of environment, average 4% for everything. On the west side, the condo price is up almost 6%. So the prices are hanging in there. And so, you know, they, it's, it's not time to run for the hill yet. The other thing is when we look at last year, we were down 43%. But over uh, May, over April, single-family homes were 544. 
and April 393. And condo sales were 766 and April were 656. So our total sales in May were 1499 in April only 1122. So there are some happiness in the numbers. So when you take a look out of town, and we're going to talk to that when we get to the questions, you go to places like Seashell. Uh, Daniel Brynelson writes me that they get in multiple offers in Seashell and in the Sunshine Coast. So maybe there's something to what we believe is going to happen, that older people will be actually be moving more out of town or more likely, as will families. Okay, so having said that, then let's take a brief look at what CMHC is doing to us again. And I'm saying that because in the last two weeks, they seem to have a barrage of things they want to do to us. First of all, starting out by saying we have to stop demand. Really? You have to stop demand? How do you do that? Well, tighten and tighten and tighten the rules. Well, now the new twist is if they lend you money, you can only use that money for construction, purchases, capital repairs, securing permanent financing if it's uh, a bridge financing. But you cannot, under no circumstances, take out equity uh, or distributions to shareholders. Now, I can make a good case as to why it's necessary, but it's it's kind of a surprise because according to Collius, it's our opinion is that this change will produce an outcome that goes against CMH Seal's goal of supporting growth in the housing market. And that's where it's at. They're forecasting 18% price declines. And nobody knows exactly where they see that or what cities are involved. And so they have a lot of bad news. They even called the deferral of the mortgage program arrears. They're not arrears. I have a government approved bank approved and a CMHC approved way to manage my finances and can postpone my payments. And at the end of that, I don't have to pay it all at once. I can move it over the length of the mortgage. It is a way to manage my financing. To call it arrears, which they changed then after the outcry, uh, is really totally disregarding. And then they made a prediction 20% will be in arrears. Come on. So they're not my favorite kind of people right now. And normally I like them. I thought CMHC was sort of with it, you know, but maybe not always. Anyways, so let me find the other one. Then there is the commercial help program. You know, Fuskens put together an outline on the commercial rent program in the in the Osbas. I have the websites there. It's an absolute must read. And then BC government stops evictions on commercial retail properties if, as an owner, you do not make an application because under the law, under the way the, the rules work, you have to actually, as an owner, help the tenant uh, get uh, get get approved. So if you don't do it, you can't evict anybody either. So. All right, so let's tackle the questions. I think we are now at about a year and a half into Ozbuzz at ozbuzz.ca. And before that, of course, for 25 years, I wrote a newsletter called the Jurox Facts by email. It used to be Facts by Facts. But anyhow, I've never seen so many questions. That must be because you're all home and you're bored and you think, oh, well, let's see what happens, right? But um, I had a lot of compliments too, and being, you know, very, you know, high ego kind of a guy, I, I'm going to read you some of the compliments. But the first one says, as a forecaster myself, I'm surprised at the number of calls you make that actually come true. All right, blush. China going after Hong Kong and Taiwan is actually now happening. Well, you have to understand, I used to run a construction management company in Taiwan, and it was a long time ago. And even then, though, it was very clear that China felt that Taiwan belonged to it as a province. And Taiwan felt that all of China should really be managed out of uh, uh, ta Taiwan. In fact, in Taiwan, they had actually a federal government for all of China, a provincial government for themselves. And so the point was, so when Trudeau kicked out Taiwan out of the United Nations, that's the old Trudeau, he put in motion a way for, Ty for mainland China to see a repatriation possible. I wrote about it at the time to my bosses. I thought, let's buy from Taiwan. They have the money. It seems to be for mainland China, we always have to give them 20 million. Then they spend 10 million with us and say, thank you very much. Pay you back over 50 years with no interest or something like that. Taiwan would be cash in a barrel head. I saw them actually, um, Bombardier, not getting the total subway system in Taiwan, several billion dollars because we would not recognize them. Anyways, the new Trudeau also has his thing about China. He has very much uh, talked about human rights and all this, and yet he doesn't dare take any chance against Taiwan. So now 
C is taking his gloves off. He's doing it in Hong Kong and he's doing it in Taiwan. They see it as renegade provinces, so that call was easy to make. And since the only the Trump right now is not playing ball, China is going every, after everybody else. Now they're going after India with border skirmishes, with, uh, with uh, trade issues, even to Africa. But that's, read it, read the details in the, in the, new, in the Osbaz when it comes out and when you have subscribed or oh, wait for it after you publishing it on the website. Now, the next question, your prediction that the high of the virus would be in April and then taper off into the summer was brilliant. Well, yeah, but you know, we're just looking at the Wuhan model, the same time frame would put the high in April. And then we felt it would type off in the summer. And actually in one of the videos, I think on April, Fourth, we felt July would be the low again, and then we might have another second wave down the road. The point is, this is sticking with us. And in that issue in March, I made the point, I looked at all the pandemics of the past and the millions of deaths that we have. And I made the point that everybody's waiting for some sort of a, um, sort of a magic uh, pill. Hey, we still haven't found a vaccine for AIDS or for Ebola, or is it just a matter of managing it? Uh, and so don't worry for some big scene that, uh, <clears throat> that people are talking about. So the point is this, um, he says in the question, he says, when is the second wave due or guru? Uh, well, of course, nobody knows that. I don't know that. It's tongue in cheek. I get it. But take a look at some of the other predictions I made. I think it was a spectacularly good issue, even if I say so myself, the March 14 issue. Okay, so then it says, I like your videos. Why don't you go all video? And I presume when you say you like my videos, that's at youtube.com, which is youtube.com slash Jurok video. My name, Jurok video. And there we have uh, a lot of the videos that we did for the Real Estate Action Group. They're still there for another couple of days, but by the end of the week, they'll be gone. But, uh, but we will be starting a series of videos like we are now. And just remember, if you go to my YouTube channel, click on subscriptions. That means really like for Facebook, click like. That's a subscription. Nobody's going to bombard you with anything. But the idea for me, it means that the more subscriptions you have, the more um, value you have as a, as a YouTube uh, a person and more options uh, that, that you can get. So do that. And if you want to leave a comment, please do make it preferably positive, but make a comment anyhow. The next question is your view on Im immigration, both international and provincial. Well, uh, Daryl Simpson from Boza said at one of the uh, podcasts or, or Zoom uh, meetings that he thought interprovincial, we may see as much as a 10% increase uh, from Alberta and, and other provinces. And then uh, when you look at the federal government, they're currently still approving inward migration. They want to have 350,000 people coming. And now we're not flying, right? So when the flights are lifted, we're going to have more immigration just from the government program. Remember last, the third quarter in last year, we had 218,000 immigrants in one quarter. Never before happened. Imagine if that was annualized, that'd be 800,000 people. And where do they all go? Primarily, they go to BC, they go to Ontario. And of course, a lot of the refugees right now go in through the Quebec border as well. But we will have a lot more people. Now, with Hong Kong, 300,000 Hong Kong Chinese with a Canadian passport, a lot of them are coming. We had originally predicted 100,000. I think it could be more that are coming back. And they don't fall under the, the, um, the foreign bias tax either because they are Canadian. But in addition to that, there's millions of Canadians outside in other countries in the world that are taking a good hard look. The virus sort of, they were stuck, they couldn't get out. And they're going to think twice about staying there and maybe coming back. So immigration is going to be strong in my view. Next question was your forecast for industrial, for retail, for multifamily, residential, real estate was astounding. <laughs> That's another one of those. I love you guys. I mean, I like everybody, but those kind of comments, of course, I've got to love you. Well, for those of you that haven't seen it, it's in the last Osbus, Osbus 45, but it's also online as a video. <clears throat> I, I put it up uh, last night again in my view of trying to see on whether you actually will like, like uh, Osbus's on video. Okay, the big question is, you know, um, Ozzy, you... you um, <clears throat> Uh, what will the real estate market do? Well, it's really a silly question. I mean, what 
is the real estate market doing? First of all, we have several markets across the country and a wide variety of markets. That's why I made a special forecast that retail is dead, hotels are dead, get out of REITs. And at the same time, though, is don't be scared of cash flow real estate, but only the deal of a lifetime. I mean, it's a very simple uh, fact that we are in difficult times, but there are always opportunities in those times. And so that's, that's essentially our forecast. Uh, the, the, and the question, of course, when somebody says, when will prices go up again? Well, first of all, they haven't gone down yet. And I just said they went up. But secondly, wait for it, wait for it. They'll go up on September the 8th at 11 p.m. Nobody knows for sure, right? I firmly believe, though, if you read Osbas 39 to 42, that my basic philosophy of you print too much money and that money competes with the money you and I earn, then real estate values are all hard assets for that matter. This should make the gold bucks happy because all of it will go up. And it has gone up for 50 years. And so, you know, question, no question about it. Now, in question, of course, on gold and silver. Ah, oh, oh, my God. If I ever wanted to do a newsletter and get a lot of action, I'm going to talk about gold and silver. But there's a lot of nutty people in the gold business, I'm telling you. I mean, I had tons of questions. Uh, gold, silver, and Bitcoin. I didn't even write about Bitcoin. Not in the last three months that I can remember. I'm, you know, getting old maybe, but... Your reference to buying gold jewelry and not bullion is stupid. You do not understand Bitcoin. You understand nothing. Silver and gold have had the greatest appreciation in history, ever. And then there were some nasty, you make a nasty comment. You're allowed to make a nasty comment, but not with foul language. The moment you do that, your history, I block you, I, you know, and if I see you, I'll talk to you about it. But anyhow, I was recommending gold, actually, and they got mad at me. But I was saying jewelry may have a place. Ah, I wish I hadn't said it. And, and I, I have never seen so many people have an opinion on that. Now look, I have real estate engraved on my forehead. If you haven't noticed that yet, I mean, then obviously you haven't followed me for a while. So read, read my basic philosophies as to why in history all the naysayers, the Harry Dents of the world, and now the Robert Kiyosaki who originally never liked real estate, and now he hates the whole economy, and a rich dad, poor dad, find out that never existed. All of these kind of things are out there. But I can't be clearer it's my asset of my choice, right? I mean, look, it has a history of performance. Half of your payment goes into your genes. It's an absolute forced savings account for many of us. If you have a $300,000 mortgage at a monthly payment of about $1,400 a month at 3%, and you could have that lower, in five years you paid off $60,000. Now, how does the average person save $60,000? But having said that, had you invested $100,000 and paid $800 an ounce in 1980, because that's when gold hit $800. Ooh, everybody was mad about how wonderful it was. But had you done that, it would take you 27 years for it to go back to 800. It was always below 800 for 27 years. And then, whoopee, in 2007, it came even. I mean, talk about the patience of a gold investor. Uh, it's always going up in time. Yeah, maybe if you bought it at 500 and got to 800. But from 800 from then, it doubled. Good for it. That's where we are. And you didn't have much leverage. The average person I always talk about margin. Who, who could have put it on margin? You would have had to pay storage fees and all that. But I don't want to go into that. But had you bought a house in Vancouver for 100000 in 1980, it has now grown to $1.6 million. Not only would you have paid off the mortgage by 2005, a very small, tiny mortgage, by the way, and since you're likely only paid down 5000 on your down payment, you might have had percentage return in the hundreds of thousands percent, right? So arrest my case. But having said that, the only reason I mentioned gold and jewelry was that I thought, if you're the guy, a gal, that wants to buy dry food, a machine gun, and move out of town, and sit on your dry food and protect, protect it, I mean, I don't know why you would want to, I mean, have you tried dry food? But anyhow, you sit there out of town, and you want to sit on some gold, okay. But that is probably stupid, because if you do that and things are that bad, then if I have a gun and you don't, you won't have any more gold. <laughs> or if you put it in your box at the bank, the bank says, hey, have no more access to it, right? So I thought, if you had jewelry, small pieces, you can give it to your friends, I mean, or other your family, you can go over the border, you don't have to declare it. That was my point, but I should have 
said it in a different kind of a way. I still feel high quality jewelry has the backbone of the Indian nation, the backbone of Iran or the Middle East or any countries that had troubles, South America and so on, have had a place for gold, but mostly gold jewelry. Now, please, if this annoys you, don't write me again, okay? I don't want to, I don't, I like real estate, okay? I just made this comment, okay? Here's the next question. What is it with Kimberly? <laughs> <laughs> Not a fan either. Yes, you must own a lot of real estate there or you're trying to flog it. I don't see any upside there for investors. Well, all right. I mean, you know, I currently, by the way, own no real estate in Kimberley. I have in the past, but uh, right now I think we all own a building lot still. I'm not flogging anything either. But I see so many people, particularly young people in the interior, they're renting because they're scared of ownership. And what I said is you can buy a ski condo on the hill with a view and a balcony and a floor-to-ceiling fireplace for under $100,000. You put down that $5,000, your monthly payment is around six hundred, dollars and most people pay eight hundred dollars rent in Kimberley, right? Actually, I started recommending those kind of suites, older buildings, at $55,000. Already that $5,000 in the last four years would have made you forty grand. I always believe you should own your real estate first. It's the only, the only, your own home first. It's the only money you can make today that's tax-free on capital gains. So you should definitely get in there. So that's that's number one. It's important. And then listen. I think they shouldn't be renting. And then, did you ever hear of skiing, or river rafting, or golfing? Five golf courses or lake fishing, and no parking meters? I mean, what's not to love? I mean, but I, that's why no parking meters, that's why I like Quality Beach too, and Secret Cove. I mean, you know, there's many things to do, but that's why I like it, and uh, if that offends you, too bad. I mean, you're looking from an investor point of view, maybe big bucks point of view. Stocks are up 30%. You must agree that stocks are soaring. That is where most of the investment money should be. Now, you know how I feel about people that start saying this. You must agree. I wrote about it at length under things people say that I hate. You know, like at the end of the day, you must agree. No, I must. No such thing must I agree. Apart from the fact that the market dropped 30% first and then went up, the whole market is four or five st stocks which trading 20% of it. We have nothing but program buying, program selling, day trading uh, in unimaginable quantities, trillions. It's the last place I want to be. But I salute you if you, as you say, sold on March 22 and bought back on March 30. Hey, you're obviously a much better guy than I am in that regard. Okay, I have cash. What and where should I buy? Well, Look, I don't worry too much about cash right now. I think in the mid to late 220s, your question should be not what you own, but what you don't own. Cash is not a bad thing. And now we're inflation babies as we're older, you know, we, cash is burning a hole in our pocket. But, you know, we want to be certain as to the outcome. It's I think the outcome will be, as always, we'll muddle through. But if you can sit on the sideline, don't feel that you have to act right now. And that similar question, you always are very bullish on real estate. Could you be wrong? Well, da, yes, of course I could be wrong. I've been bullish for 45 years, but I could have been wrong, of course, through any of the past crises. Sweden interest rates at 500%, Asian crisis, Russian crisis, currency crisis. And as I said in one of the videos, which is, by the way, an interesting video that you should watch, when as a president of Block Brothers, we bought a company from the Resolution Trust Company in 1990 that had taken all of the bad debts of the bank, they call them non-core assets, and they blew them out. And I personally bought a $10 million company on behalf of my company for $600,000. Yes, we've been through tough times before, and you wouldn't believe the headline. So, yes, could I be wrong? Yes, but I haven't been wrong as far as real estate investment comes, thoughtful, predictable, evaluated with some work, and not just following some guru, not a plan, not a fund, but own cash flow real estate always, you know. And I don't like all real estate. I have warned you against not buy hotel condos, not buy timeshare, not quarter share, phase two ski condos. And then right now I'm saying buy the deal of the lifetime, something that you have researched on that's so good. I mean, it's so good. You know you're going to do okay. And by the way, that's another question. What the heck is a deal of a lifetime? I can't find one on the west side. Now, very possible prices haven't gone down. Owners don't have to sell. And right now, understand, the interest is in single-family homes and townhouses. Very strong interest. Why? 
because maybe I don't want to go up in the elevator anymore. Hmm? And there might be a reason. So maybe the condo sector will may see some pressure. Plus, we had some condos coming on. By the way, you know, according to Boza and Magnum, some 600 units closed that had sold in, in two years ago and now closed. The owner's quite happy to move in. Not one uh, back out of their deal. So, you know, we have some really good news in that regard that nobody talks about. Okay, we now have governments that acted quickly and solved the financial crisis. Why not buy now everything? Because inflation is surely the outcome. Your arguments? Well, yeah, I think in the long term, hard assets will go up. Even the much quoted David Rosenberg says, buy some real estate uh, after, after the crisis. However, we have solved a financial crisis, and that's the issue no more. Right now, we've created a solvency crisis, and we are far, far from having solved that one. You have to read the whole thing to go, but to me, that's a big thing, the solvency problem. So many bankruptcies, companies in Chapter 11, I see nothing but depression ahead, you know. Two questions, exactly the opposite. So I say your view is important for you. You have to have a view, and I appreciate that. But remember, when a company goes into Chapter 11, it's reorganizing. It's actually cleaning up its balance sheet. It gets a judge to wipe out the debts and stiffs some of the, the shareholders, maybe. But then they emerge from Chapter 11, and they're back in business. There are thousands of corporations right now operating quite fine. At one point or another, we're back in Chapter 11. If they're Chapter 7, they're dead. That's what you have to worry about. So if you worry about bankruptcy, look at whether they are in Chapter 7 or Chapter 11. And then there's a whole bunch of questions about California and all this kind of stuff, and I talked about already about the deal of a lifetime. And then uh, I guess uh, I'm going to close it off. As I see, I'm close to a half an hour. I didn't want to go any longer than that. But I liked your item on behavior and the changes ahead. You say all is good now, and I say no. I, I, wish, I wish it was. But as a, as a North America, by that I mean the United States and Canada, we are more and more polarized, you know. We only want to hear what we believe. We only watch the TV shows that we already talk in our kind of a language. I spend five minutes with anybody talking, and I know whether they are watching CNN or whether they are watching, whether they have a world view and maybe watch Al Jazeera or Deutsche Welle or B, uh, BBC. And then if, if it's BBC, is it the American version or the European version? It's funny, actually. Make, when you're at home, make yourself an, an expert. Watch a major nose and switch between Al Jazeera, BBC, Canada, CNN, and Fox. You think you're living in, a, in five different countries, and, and of course you are, but their views of the world are totally different. But anyhow, the worrisome aspect to me is what happened to supporting a democratically elected government? I think the election in the States, no matter who wins, there'll be blood in the streets. You cannot convince the Democrats that there's any solid inch of goodness in, uh, in the, the Republicans and vice versa. And none of them will accept the outcome of the election. So what happened to a loyal opposition? What happened to the outcome being a democracy? Now, Churchill said democracy is a lousy form of gov government, but it's the best we have. Yeah, so vote on, vote, vote often. <laughs> I mean, at the time that you're supposed to vote. And Support your government, even if it's not your favorite government. You don't like Trudeau? I will still support him. I will still support the government. I may argue and complain. It's the joy of a democracy that we all have that ability. Now, the old adage is that if you're not a socialist under 40, you have no heart. And if you're one over 40, you have no brains. I used to understand that. But, you know, today, there's no age limit to... to uh, sanity. And I've, the biggest thing that I have is the, that I worry about is the polarization in the world, whether it's Germany or France. And certainly the forecast we made for the euro coming down was way correct. The Canadian dollar is getting stronger right now because the US dollar is under pressure, but we still think long term the Canadian dollar will continue to be under pressure. I worry about CMHC. What do they know that you and I don't know? Why are they, I have never seen this government institution that has made 17 billion in profit on us homeowners for the last 10 years. 17 billion. And made 10 billion in the last crisis, but just in 2008 and 2009. 
And they're worried about us paying when we are 0.025 in default on mortgages, but nobody is worried about a 26% credit card or department store. Don't get me going. Next time we'll talk a little bit why it takes you 110 years if you have a $20,000 charge on your visa. It takes you 110 years if you just make the average payment. Blows your mind. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know. Subscribe. And see you next time. Bye.